Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? Well, you look a lot better, I'll tell you that. Nothing greater than God's presence. Amen? Remember, we're going to be there forever. Why not get it now? Why wait till you go home? <laughs> Let's bring home here. And we do that by praise and worship. <laughs> Glory to God. Things are happening. God's on the throne, and he's kicking butt. How many of y'all know that there's an invasion of righteousness in the world? There's an invasion of righteousness and justice in the whole world right now. And you're a part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's an area that, uh, because there's such an invasion right now, God is trying to bring up his people, tighten them up. We're tightening up the situation right now. He's saying tighten up. Amen. Tighten up, man. And end is tightening up. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the, sometimes in the sifting and the trials and tribulations. Remember, trials and tribulations bring two things. The number one thing it does is it exposes your enemy. But see, people get so caught up in their trial and tribulation, they get sucked into self. And in this, it gives an opportunity to expose your enemy. What you're battling with is your enemy. So you can take out the Holy Ghost bazooka, the sword of the Spirit, and kick butt. Instead of going into the woes as measies. Amen. And the second thing it does is exposes our impurities. Because why? Because only the enemy has got access to impurities. It doesn't have access to anything of righteousness. Amen. So that means the more we live a life of righteousness, the less the enemy has access to you. Now, we can't live a life of righteousness ourselves, can we? It's the righteousness of Christ. So that means we need to be filled with the Spirit all the time. Amen. We need to assemble, be filled. We need to feed ourselves with the Word of God. We need to strengthen our inner man, convert our soul, get our flesh crucified and nailed to the cross with Jesus. Amen. And that takes a process. That means that we must be led by the Spirit. Everything is led by the Spirit. Those are called sons and daughters of God. Amen. Would you turn to 1 John chapter 3, please? 1 John chapter 3. Listen, living a life of righteousness doesn't make you right. Amen? We make mistakes. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's called self-righteousness. And there's a difference. <laughs> oh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. The Word of God is worth the drive. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Verse 4, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Where is there no sin? In him. So if you're in him, are you going to sin? No, it doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you're not going to allow sin to reign. Amen? And verse uh, 6, whoever abides in him does not sin. There's the answer. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. What's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. So there's an area of living a life of righteousness means you practice righteousness. You live it now. You've been taken out of darkness, brought into the glorious light of Christ Jesus. You have a desire now. You desire as a born-again believer to live a life of righteousness. Now, this righteousness is an area of right standing with God. Amen? You want to live to please Him, not yourself. I don't live to please my wife. I don't live to please my children. I don't live to please nobody but Him. If I please Him, everybody else gets pleased. Amen? 
So when I displease them, nobody else gets pleased. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. In other words, when you choose to cooperate with sin, that means you're influenced by a demonic force. Amen? It's amazing how many people still don't believe in demons. Demon is a disembodied spirit that influences. Where do you think thoughts come from? Amen? Think about that. Would God tell you to murder someone? I mean, I know you want to kill someone sometimes, but it doesn't mean you want to murder someone. I mean, but unless it's a self-defense, you know. Praise God. <laughs> I mean, you got to defend yourself. Somebody pulls out a gun, you better pull out a bazooka. But bind that spirit first. <laughs> then shoot them. <laughs> then you can pray for their healing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Again, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might... Destroy the works of the devil. Now, why wouldn't they have might in there? I mean, like God can't do it? Cooperation. See, now this is where you and I cooperate with the plan of God, which is called grace. It's not God's unmerited favor. Hello? You earn God's favor. Grace is God's plan of escape. When you cooperate with grace, you escape. Amen? That's his plan. So in this, as we're cooperating with his plan, part of his plan is destroying the enemy. Amen? That's why we believe in first strike. There's enough wimpy Christians out there. There need to be attackers. We need to be in, we are in a war right now. That's why it's called spiritual warfare. There is a war going on, and if you're not in it, you become a casualty. And you maybe become a casualty and not even know it. Because Satan's greatest weapon is deception. Hallelujah. Glory. All right, let's go a little further. In verse 10, in this the children of God. Oh, no, verse 9. And whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. In other words, you will reject. Now, what is sin actually? Sin is the presence of evil. The transgression is the act of their influence and iniquity. When you act on it, brings a curse on yourself and your family line until it's broken. That's why many of us were out there because of what our families did. Nobody's ever repented for the sins of the forefathers. That's what ancestral curses are. And they recycle until they're broke. But again, that's where Papa says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they don't know these things. Hallelujah. In verse 10, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Now, check that out. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not following the true God. They're following themselves. They're following something else. They may call themselves Christians, but they're not practicing righteousness. That means they're disconnected. There's a difference. Remember, the throne room says justice and righteousness. You ain't practicing those things, you're not getting in. But I've been a believer for 25 years. I don't care how long you've been a believer. Belief means to follow. If you're not a follower, you ain't getting in. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people when they get before the throne. And Dad says, sorry, I don't know you. I'm saved by grace. No, you're saved by cooperation with grace. If you ain't cooperating, you ain't getting in. Does everybody get this? That's not my dad's doctrine. You are saved by grace. Grace is what? Cooperation with the plan. Amen? Hallelujah. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder his brother? Because his works were evil and his brother's 
righteous. Wow. So we see here practicing righteousness and works of righteousness is to be born of God. It's a state of being. Amen. Righteous acts destroys the influences of the enemy. In fact, think about this. What was the book of Acts? It's the book of righteousness. What were they doing? They were practicing righteous acts, weren't they? They were healing. They were spreading the word. They were, does everybody understand that? that? What were they doing? They were imitating, walking in the character of Christ. That's what the book of Acts is about. It was the acts of righteousness. Amen? Praise God. In other words, they were right standing with God. The results of works of and practicing and works of righteousness allows an access to three levels of reward. Personal, temporary, and eternal. Only righteousness will do that. It allows access where God rewards you in the temporary realm, personal, and eternal. Three things happen. In Psalm 37. Hallelujah. Psalm 37. Remember, everything is always associated with meeting a condition. Amen. Meeting a condition. And meeting a condition is an area where you want to get to a level of faith and you want to get to a place of sowing. Because what you sow in the spirit, you what? Reap. And the word says that after you've completed what God asked you to do, then a promise is released. See, people try to get the promises from God without doing anything. It doesn't work that way. Psalm 37, in verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and do what? Feed on his faithful. Listen, if you don't know him, how can you feed on him? How can you call yourself a believer if you don't feed on this word? How are you going to know what's what? See, the word believe means to what? Follow. Follow. That's why so many people think that they're believers and they're good people. Well, good people don't get to heaven. Only those that practice righteousness. Other than that, they're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not the tree of righteousness, which is life. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land. Feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because when you delight in him, remember your heart is the core of your character. And it's also is the core of all desire. So when there's been an exchange made in the presence of God, removing your presence of the old, your heart changes. Now your desires are different. You no longer desire the things of the world. You're no longer chasing after the opposite sex. You're chasing Jesus. Amen? And then God brings whatever is what. You're always waiting on the Lord. You don't have to chase nothing. It comes to you. When you start chasing, usually you're out of order. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it what? To pass your desire. Why? Because it's his desire. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the new day. Why is that going to happen? Because now you have the desires of Christ. Now you're expressing and working the works of righteousness. Amen? There's a difference. He says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And don't fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. So he says, feed, trust, commit yourself. Delight, follow him. And out of you will come his righteousness. Amen. In Proverbs 23. Glory. 
life of righteousness. Proverbs 23. You don't want to be known as a good person. You want to be known as a righteous person. Amen? There's enough good people out there. Not enough righteous. Proverbs 23, verse 1. When you sit down to eat with a ruler or someone of authority, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. That's what the world offers, deceptive food. What is deceptive food? It's things that you agree with that the world is feeding. Remember, the Lord said, my people cannot what, live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So God is trying to say, feed on me, feed on me. Hear my word. Feed on my word. And you'll know the truth. Get wisdom from me. Get understanding from me. Not from the world. Because the world is deceptive. It's ruled by Satan's kingdom and demonic forces. Look at the Democratic Party. It's nothing but demonic forces. They're evil. And not only them, but all these other ones. Unless they are producing righteousness, they're not of God. Does everybody get that? That is the fruit. They're not producing right. So if they're, if they're out promoting sexual perversion, same sex, and abortion, that's not of God. And anyone that approves of it and promotes it will be judged just like them. It blows me away of how many Christians are still doing it. It's like, whoo -hoo. You know why? They're veiled. They're blinded. And that's what Satan does. He blinds them. They, have no, they don't get it. They go to church, they pay their tithes, but there's got to be something missing called God's presence. God's presence. Because without his presence, there isn't that strong conviction. Without his presence, there's not that clarity. Amen? Everybody all right? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. So he says, uh, do not... Desire his delicacies for the deceptive food. Verse 4. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Wow. Go to verse 37. Okay, don't go to verse 37. <laughs> Boy, did I fly somewhere there. <laughs> Starting my own page here. Anyways. Praise God. That's all we wanted on that one. <laughs> so we don't want to eat, eat uh, deceptive food, right? It's compromise. You know, compromise is a number one killer besides pride. Because when someone compromises, they usually justify afterwards. They try to protect their wrong decision. How about just repenting? get it over with, man. And the longer you take to repent, the longer you're going to reap. Amen. Praise God. 2 Timothy 3. Life of righteousness. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter three. In verse ten. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be at Antioch and Icam at Lystra. 
what persecu persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now, you know, so many times, you know, one of the things that happened is as the, an individual fall into affliction when he's straight away. Amen? Affliction will come by the enemy, and God will allow it to happen. Why? Because he's trying to get your attention to get back in divine order. Amen? So many times people will get sick. Things will happen. Something will happen. Accidents. You never know. Why? Because God will lift his protection. And now again, he's there. Didn't mean he left, but he's watching. He's trying to get an individual's attention so they can get back online and get in divine order. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer what? Persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's where we are right now. It's intense out there. And I don't mean living intense. I mean, I mean that's out there. But it's crazy out there. We had a guy came one of our program one day, and we were telling him over the phone, it's an intense place. Well, when he showed up, he, went, he walked through the house, walked outside in the yard. Where's the tents? It's a bro, man. He couldn't handle it. He wanted to live in a tent, so he left. What's that, a tent demon? I don't know. Anyhow. <laughs> Praise God. Is everybody okay? Good. Verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Listen, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in what? Righteousness. So if you're not reading the Word, can you actually produce righteousness? No. You might be a goody, but you ain't producing righteousness. You cannot eat from the tree of life without here. That means you cannot produce the fruits of righteousness. You'll pr fruit, pr have produced the fruits of goodness. You'll be a good person. They're deceived. Amen? We lived, we tried to live a good life, but we lived an evil one too. It was a good and evil life. Now we only live a righteousness and justice life because of who we know and who lives in us. Hallelujah. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good righteous work. Amen? A righteous act. Hallelujah. Righteousness is expressed as the expression of the divine nature and the character of Christ. 1 Peter 4. First Peter chapter 4. That's why it's so important to learn. Jesus said, come to me and learn from me. Amen. Practicing righteousness. You practice brings things perfect. The more you practice something, the more you perfect it. <clears throat> but if you're not practicing it, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, because he brings counsel, correction, and direction. Amen? And as you obey his counsel, correction, and direction, you get protection. What a devil can't touch you. And again, he can make those paper airplanes and throw them at you. Just don't read them. You'll be fine. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. Therefore, is everybody there? Since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the 
physical realm in the flesh for the, for the loss of men, but for the will of what? Of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. In other words, you no longer take that drink anymore. You no longer lift up that cigarette anymore. You no longer laugh at their dirty jokes. You are not a part of that life anymore. I won't even go, if I go to a place and they got wine in the communion, I'm not taking it. Does everybody understand that? That's not how it was supposed to be. It's fermented. We don't take things fermented in that degree. Degree. People don't realize that the wine that Jesus produced was the greatest juice ever. It wasn't fermented. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that tonight. People, well, I can drink. Jesus drank wine. Well, you idiot. That's not what he meant. People go to communion that have been drug addicts and alcoholics. They go to a place and drink a little th shot of wine, and they're gone. And people wonder, oh, I don't know, I had communion, and poo, it was gone. Where'd you go to the bar? He wanted more communion. The problem is he went to a place called, instead it was food and spirits, it was food and demons. Amen? He was communicating with the wrong spirit. Oh, hallelujah. It's incredible to me anyways. Praise God. In verse 4, in regard to these things, they think it's strange that you don't run with them anymore. Amen? With the, in the same flood, of dissipation, speaking evil of you. You're going to be persecuted because you don't no longer do those things anymore. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. And listen, be hospitable, to one, one, one another, and cut the grumbling out. Grumbling draws evil presence. As each one has received a gift, let him minister to one another, good stewards, and manifold grace of God Almighty. Hallelujah. So in this, we are living the life of Christ as a life of righteousness. If you're not living a life of righteousness, you're not living the life of Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. In verse 16. <clears throat> Again, living a righteous life doesn't make you right in everything either. Amen. Let's speak it together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And what's the word believe mean? Follow. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written, to just live by faith. Wow. Now listen. Faith is produced by what? Hearing the word of God. Amen? Okay, hold on to that. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. 
For since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were dark, and professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made with corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things, in other words, idols. Therefore, God, has, God gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship. And serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever and ever. Oh, hallelujah. It says that we're to live by faith, which we know if you live by faith, it's accountable. It's accounted as righteousness. Why? Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. All right? Obeying produces righteousness. So when you obey you produce righteousness. Obedience is associated with practicing righteousness. So when God says something, in other words, through his word, whatever he says, when his voice comes, you say, yes, Lord. When you go and do the act, you're doing acts of righteousness because he sent you. Genesis 15. We live by faith which is accounted as righteousness through submission and obedience. Genesis chapter 15. In verse 1. Abram. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. God's voice. The word of the Lord came to him in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your, I'm your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Praise God. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? See, and I go childless. And the heir of my house is El Elazar of Damascus. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is not my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one will come from your body, your own body, and shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look, now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness again faith comes by hearing righteousness comes by obeying faith comes by hearing righteousness comes by obeying isaiah 61 Life of righteousness. Hallelujah. Let's sow it, speak it together. The Spirit, let's confess this one. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the what? Brokenhearted to proclaim freedom or liberty to the captives, to the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who are mourning Zion, and give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called what? Trees of righteousness. Now, a tree represents spirit, so that they may be called spirits of 
righteousness. Amen. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Wow. So again, he's talking about the anointing, which is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which is upon us. That's when we worship, we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You speak in funny language. Hello? Speaks right to God. There's an exchange made. It sounds funny at first until you know him. Then you realize how essential praying in tongues is. In fact, it's the seventh part of your full armor. People don't know that. Hallelujah. We need the anointing. Without the anointing, we're nothing. We would be known as trees or spirits of righteousness expressing the character of Christ. And you can't do that without the anointing. Why? Because Jesus was the anointed one in his anointing. And he sent his spirit in us. Now we must keep his spirit activated. We must keep faith activated. Why? So righteousness cannot constantly be manifested. Psalm 89. Life of righteousness. Psalm 89, verse 14. Is everybody there? Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. Now think about this. Where is his throne? It's in the third heaven, right? Okay. So if righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne, anyone not practicing righteousness or justice, are they going to get in? No. They're not. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. And in your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our king to the Holy One of Israel. Oh, yes. Righteousness and justice is the foundation of the throne. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to what? Please God. How to walk and please God. For you know that what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Listen, when God speaks, it's a command. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification, your separation from the world. You are set apart for him, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects us does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Yow. Therefore, again, he who rejects, doesn't reject a man or woman, but and whoever, but rejects God. And you don't want to reject God, right? You reject him, he rejects you. Sanctification, separation from the world, no longer touching the things that are unclean or agreeing with them. First Peter chapter one. First 
Remember, righteousness is invading every area. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 3. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you and me, who are kept by the what? Power of God. And you know what the power of God is called? The anointing. Who's kept by the what? The anointing. Through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the what? Genuineness of your faith, which being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, Though now you do not see him, yet believe in you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Searching what and what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that it, not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering to things which have now been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, rest your hope, fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But he who has called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Remember, faith comes by hearing. Righteousness comes by obedience. Amen. Psalm 34, and we'll close here. A life of righteousness. Psalm 34. Everybody there? Let's speak at verse 11. Psalm 34, verse 11. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will what? Teach you the fear of the Lord. That's reverence, honor, respect to his presence and his word. Who is a man that desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and he, his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their trouble. The who? The righteous. He guards all his bones. None of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. Where did I go? Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and contrite and it saves such as have a contrite spirit. Now this broken heart Hello, is humble. Hello. Some people get a broken heart 
because it's self-inflicted. It's different. This is an area where a broken heart is open. Let me tell you, the more you get into God's presence, the more your heart becomes broken. It becomes open. It becomes pliable. In other words, he can mold it. He can do whatever he wants with it then. Now he's molding your heart into his heart. Now he's giving you his desires. In fact, you begin to reject all other desires because you don't want to contaminate your heart anymore. You want to maintain the, the desires that please him in everything that you do. This is a life of righteousness. You want to please him. Not because you have to. Because you love him. You're in love with the one that created you now. You no longer just read about him because it's there. He's no longer in Sports Illustrated. Amen? <laughs> He's beyond all of that. He is who he is. And we are because he is. Amen. <laughs> Let's go a little further. Praise God. In verse 19, everyone say it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now, these are not self-inflictions he's talking about, okay? You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be, you know, people are going to say things about you. You're going to be offended. You're going to get angry. But it's what you do with it. Amen. You forgive and bless. Forgive and bless. Forgive and bless. God takes care of them. Amen. Because the word says coals will come down on us. So let him take care of them. I call down fire on everything else. I don't need to call them on people. I'm after all the regimes of darkness. All the corruption. I'm calling fire down on every one of those suckers. We want to destroy them. See, you know what? Think about this. Oh, I don't want to put this in a simple way. And, and when God did battle, amen, he didn't go out to win. He went out to kill. Does everybody get it? When, he went, when they went to battle, they didn't go out to win. They went out to destroy. Why? Because when they destroyed them, they won. And that's how we need to be in warfare. We need to not go out to win. We need to go out to destroy. Because when you destroy the powers of darkness, you win. Amen? That's how we win battles. We win battles by destroying. Listen, the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy you. So destroy them first before they get to you. Hallelujah. Verse 21, it says, evil shall what? Slay the wicked. Praise God. It's called bringing confusion in the enemy's camp. And you can call that in too. And those who hate the righteous will be what? Condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be what? Condemned. Listen, the devil can't touch you unless you allow him to. But if you've got open doors in your life still, he's going to have access to you. He'll come and listen, if there's areas of stealing, killing, and destroying in your life, that means there's open doors. If there's a place where you can't, keep, you, you can't move forward, there's so many limitations in your life, you've got some open doors. You need to search them out. Find out what's going on. Amen? Is everybody okay? We want to live a life of righteousness to not only please him, but righteousness is invading every area. We want to be the light to the world. We want to be the salt to the world. Amen? And we want to be armed and dangerous to the world. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let your word, Lord, penetrate each and every one. Protect it by the blood. And rebuke the enemy to try and steal your word from anyone tonight. For we are your righteousness, not our own. Establish, perfect, settle, and protect your people. And the seed that's been imparted, that they may live a life of righteousness, well-pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God.